millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Please tell me this is not just me, but it feels like every time I go through another summer season, I have really good intentions with my money. I have goals set in place. I feel like, you know, I'm on track. I'm not going to go over budget. Everything's going to be great. And at the end of the summer, I'm looking at my numbers and I'm thinking, wait a minute, (laughs) this is not what it was supposed to be. So if you're like me and you find yourself kind of rolling out of that summer slump or heading into the fall and you're wanting to figure out how to get your money on track, this episode is absolutely for you. I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. Today we're talking get your budget in shape for the fall and I'm going to be dishing out some out of the box tips to get a money plan in place for the fall so you're rolling in the new year sitting pretty. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Algorithms can do so much more than control social media feeds. In fact, they have the power to save lives and improve our health. At the Weizmann Institute, Professor Yonina Eldar has pioneered innovative algorithms that optimize MRI scans and make ultrasound devices more portable, affordable, and accessible. Professor Eldar's lab develops AI tools that can pave the way to new technologies that can see, hear, and communicate beyond existing limits. Learn more at CelebratingGreatMinds.org. We got so many amazing Ask Shauna questions, so I can't thank you enough for sending these in. Some of these are just blowing my mind, like they're such awesome questions, and I'm just totally inspired by you guys. I'm totally inspired by your stories and what you're trying to achieve. It just, it's so exciting to me that this podcast is really about just helping you be the best that you can be with your money, with your life, and help you kind of connect all of those dots. It's certainly a process that I've been through myself quite a few times, if I'm going to be honest. And it's not an easy process. And so I just feel kind of like it's my job or my duty to at least help you do the same. And I know that's not for everybody. I mean, some people, they just want to listen to this podcast and all they want to hear is strategies and tips. And what I found is that money is just so much more than that. It's it's so much bigger than 
just those, you know, 10 steps or five tips to that. It It's just so encompassing. And I think until you really realize that with your own finances, the puzzle pieces don't start to click. That's at least what I've learned in my experience and what I've seen with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. So I'm not just I'm not just telling you this because it's something I've been through. I'm telling you this because it's something that I've seen with other people. And I don't know, you know, when you see something enough times with enough other people, you start to think, well, there must be something to this. There must be some commonality because all of these people have different lives. They have different incomes. They have different family sizes. They come from different backgrounds. And yet, if we actually boil it all down, they have the same needs. They have the same things that they want to do with money. And then they have the same, you know, sort of hangups when it comes to money. So I guess what I'm saying is there is a method to the madness. I promise you that. So the Ask Shauna question today comes from Victoria. And Victoria says, hi, Shauna. I absolutely love your podcast. I've been listening for a while now and you've been with me through buying a house, getting married, taking a month-long honeymoon in Europe, and changing careers. You're an inspiration. I look forward to each new podcast you put out. You're the queen of the credit card game and I have a question for you. Between my husband and I, we have three credit cards that we have to pay an annual fee on. I know I need to call and get it waived. Working on that. I have a Chase Sapphire card and we both have Southwest Airlines cards. We pretty much wiped out all our points for our European honeymoon and I'm wondering if it would be worth my husband opening a Chase Sapphire card to get the $50,000 bonus or should we just keep putting everything on my card and rebuild our points slowly? What are the pros and cons of opening another credit card? We do subscribe to your philosophy of using our credit card like a debit card, pay it off each month, so it's not like we're going to get any debt here. Basically, if we opened a card for my husband, we would stop using mine. I hope all this makes sense and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Keep up the great work. That's such a great question, Victoria. Thank you for sending that in. I know that, you know, sometimes it's hard trying to figure out with the whole credit card point thing, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? What makes most sense? And I think what's so great about your situation is you're already using your credit cards like debit cards. You're paying them off every month. So you're way ahead of the game. So I I don't even know if there are necessarily a whole lot of cons when it comes to this, I mean, the only cons I can really think of is, of course, you're getting another credit card, right? There's always the possibility of debt. That's, of course, a possibility. It doesn't sound like that's going to happen in your case, but, you know, it's another possibility. And then, of course, we're adding another annual fee on top of your other annual fees. So yes, 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 please call. Try to get those waived. At least try to get them reduced. I found that if sometimes the credit card won't actually waive the annual fee, but, you know, there's a little like barter system. So before I hang up the phone, I say, okay, well, you know, if you're not willing to waive it, are you willing to reduce the annual fee? And a lot of times I either get a full waive or I get a reduction in the annual fee. So to me, like either way I've won, even if I have to pay something, it's at least a lower percentage of the annual fee. So just kind of food for thought there. But I think there's a lot of pros when it comes to this question. One thing is you are thinking about this smartly. It is a way to supercharge your points in a big way. You know, my question to you is, do you have a trip coming up or maybe you need these points? It's never a bad idea to have points. I use points. We're going to talk about this later in the episode, but I use points for a lot of things throughout the year, not just for travel. So I kind of subscribe to the theory of more points is better as long as you're managing the credit cards, you know, in a smart way, which it sounds like you're doing. It could also help boost your credit score. Remember, there are lots of factors here. This would be for your husband, particularly if it's in his name, but you know, you'd be widening that available credit versus use credit, which is a huge percentage of your credit score. It's about 30% of your credit score. So there is a chance that he might see a bump in his credit score just by applying for the new card. But at the end of the day, I mean, I don't really think it's a bad idea to have another card to get those points. And then you just have lots of options. You have lots of options of what you could do for your points, you know, if some of your other cards do have 
a fair amount of points maybe for eating out or, you know, if you're using your Southwest card, obviously you'd use that card when you're flying on Southwest. So there may be a reason why you use one or the other cards. But I think in order to get that big bump of that 50,000 points, why not? As long as you're already using those cards in a really smart way, you're paying whatever balance you have on them off every month. I don't see a lot of harm in the strategy. Now, some people get a little crazy and some people send in questions where, you know, they've got 10 cards plus and they're trying to play the credit card game. And you can certainly go down the magic carpet ride of credit card points where you're just like, oh my God, 50,000 points. Oh my God, 75,000 points. I remember uh, sitting on an airline once and they came over the loudspeaker before the plane was going to take off and they said, okay, if you sign up for the credit card right here on the plane, we're going to give you 50,000 points plus 25,000 points plus another 10,000 points. But I mean, it was, it was crazy. When I started to add up the amount of points that I was going to get just for signing up the credit card on the plane, I was like, this is way more than two round trip tickets. And it's just... I don't know. It's like candy to my to my ears. I, I, I sweet music, I guess I should say to my ears, and I can't help it. But I definitely know that there's a point of no return where you have too many credit cards, too many annual fees you're trying to juggle between, and it just gets a bit ridiculous. Three, four cards, not a big deal. As you go through life, you may end up racking up more cards. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But it sounds like you've got it all in the right perspective here. And like I said, I just don't see too many cons with this scenario. Now, if you're listening to this question and you're somebody who's not great with paying off your credit card every month, this would be something I wouldn't suggest to you because I don't want you to get in even more debt or even the possibility of more debt. If you're in that situation, it's really about just how can I pay off those credit cards the fastest way possible? Because let's just pretend the interest rate on your credit card is, I don't know, what's kind of an average rate? Somewhere between 20 and 25% is usually the average rate. The cards that have the points and rewards with them usually have a higher interest rate. So let's just pretend you're at 20%. Well, if you're carrying debt on that, you're paying 20% of the amount, the balance amount on that credit card. And it's it's a, you know, it's a lot of money. There's really no way to get around that. But if you pay that card off right away, you've essentially given yourself a 20% return on your investment. So it's a really good idea to do whatever you can to at least get the credit card debt paid off. Think about it smartly. Try to get it on a 0% card or low interest card. Beg, borrow, don't steal. <laughs> Beg, borrow, do whatever you need to do to pay that card off. So if you're in that situation, I'd say, you know, hold off, wait till you get in a better situation with your debt, then you can use a little bit of the strategy that Victoria and her husband are doing in order to play the points game a little bit. Because points matter, and my philosophy is, if you're going to spend the money anyway, so you're not going out and buying, you know, 20 big screen TVs, you're going to go to eat every month, you're going to get groceries every month, you know, the stuff that you're normally going to do. Why would you not get points, rewards, cash back, whatever it is for you? Why would you not get that anyway? It's worth real money to you. And that real money then you can turn around and use for lots of other stuff. So I'm a huge fan of the credit card game. I have gotten sucked down the pipeline a few times in my life and I've had to pull myself really, really hard out of it. But I don't know. Maybe that's just kind of the fun of it. I'm a little bit of a competitive risk taker. So maybe I, I'm a little crazy on, on that end. But it's certainly a, a fun thing. And when you can get those points and you can book that free airfare or book that free hotel or use the points for something else, ah, it just brings a smile to my face. So you're here for the episode today where we're talking all about tips and ideas to get your money in shape for the fall. And I've done this episode every single year that we've had the podcast now, but I really wanted to come up with stuff that I feel is a little out of the box. And I know that it's hard because we're all in different seasons of life. And sometimes even the normal quote unquote fall budget tips 
somehow they hit you different at different times in your life. You might have listened to the episode last year, and for some reason, some things just didn't resonate with you, and all of a sudden, now they start to resonate with you. That's just kind of, I call it like the money cycle. That's just kind of the way money ebbs and flows. So sometimes I can do an episode about the exact same tips and ideas and now you're like, oh, I get it. That totally registers with me where six months ago you weren't even paying attention. I was just background noise to you. So I I wanted to come up with some things that were a little bit different because like I said in the opening, we all blow our budget over summer. I, in fact, I think that's actually what <laughs> summer is there for. It's like the ploy with summer where uh, somehow money evaporates. I don't know if it has to do with just the weather's nice where most people are and you know, you feel a certain draw to buy things, to spend money on vacations, just to do more outdoorsy things and all of those outdoorsy things always seem to cost more money than you actually thought they were. But we're rolling into the fall and we're right around the holidays. I mean, before you know it, it's going to be the holidays, which just absolutely, uh, it just blows my mind. I, I feel like such a broken record with you where I'm constantly saying like, oh my God, it's already summer. Oh my God, it's already the holidays. But are you with me? I mean, does it does it just feel like it just feels like the weeks and the days and the months and just it sort of evaporates on me. And I was watching TV the other day and I think we mentioned this last year on an episode. One of our guilty pleasures, don't judge, promise me that you're not going to judge, is we actually watch all of those crazy Hallmark movies, you know, like Hallmark Channel now has, you know, they're going to have movies in October and then they've got all of those Christmas movies and then they roll into January and then they roll into Valentine's Day. And admittedly, I was not a Hallmark person before I met Jeff. And I remember the first year we were dating and it rolled around to that time of the year. He was like, oh my God, the Hallmark movies are coming on. And I looked at him, I'm like, seriously? He's pretty sarcastic, in case you haven't noticed. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> He's like, no, I, I actually love the Hallmark movies. So of course our DVR like blew up with the Hallmark movies. So now it's just, it's part of the fun. They're ridiculous. The plot lines are all the same, in my opinion. But they're they're just, they pull you in. And there's something about them that just makes you feel warm and cozy. So those are starting soon. And that is crazy. But you're not here to uh, hear me go on and on about Hallmark movies. (laughs) I will though. Don't challenge me. I totally will. So I've got a couple of things prepared that that I want to walk you through these, these different ideas to think about the fall and to think about your money a little bit differently. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. 
Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet, finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T A L K A N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Whatever you're saving up for, a CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC. So I want you to think about one thing. One thing, one little step, something in your finances that you know you need to do, but you haven't done yet. What is that thing? Picture it in your head. For me, this year, I think it's a lot of estate planning, document stuff that I've probably pushed off a little bit too long. We need to redo our will and we need to update our advanced healthcare directive. It's just a bit out of date. We need to just fine tune a lot of these little things that are naggy little money to do things that easily and every month kind of fall to the bottom of the list for me. Another thing that I'm trying to be so much better at is every month I, because I work for myself, I have to stay on top of all of my receipts. I have to be like a receipt ninja. And it's not really in my DNA to be that detailed. It's just a little bit hard for me. I have to motivate myself. I have to pump myself up. I have to put on some music and pour myself a glass of wine and create an atmosphere, as crazy as that sounds to motivate myself to do it. So I need to get better at every week organizing my expenses and categorizing them. The crazy thing is that it really only takes me maybe 10 to 15 minutes at the absolute most. But most Sundays I find myself thinking, you know what? You deserve a break. You deserve to sit on the couch, 
to watch football or whatever else is on and not to have to think about anything, certainly not to have to think about my money, which I know is counterintuitive because it would be so much easier if I just took that 10 to 15 minutes. So that is something that I have been ruthlessly working on and it's going fairly well. (laughs) Last week, I sort of fell off and Monday morning, I found myself going, wait a minute, you promised yourself you were going to do this, but that's the cool thing and why I try to be super honest about stuff that I'm working on too so that you know that it's it's really easy to fall off the wagon on a lot of this stuff, but you just got to pick yourself up and give yourself enough grace to say, ah, no big deal. I'll get to it next week or I'll figure it out tomorrow. It doesn't have to be a today thing. So I want you to think about that one thing or that one little step in your finances because that's where I want you to start with your fall money to do list is is thinking about that thing is really going to help give your budget, give your money, give it all a direction. I tell people this all the time and It's the closest reference that I can use to money is, I don't know if you remember, but before GPS, we used to get in cars and we had to use, you know, Google Maps or I even forgot, MapQuest, I think was what it was called. We had to figure out and print out the directions and figure out how to get ourselves from point A to point B. And it was a little pretty much a pain in the ass, (laughs) if you ask me. Now it's so easy. Of course, our phones just talk to us or or our our cars talk to us and they tell us where to go and which way to turn and all of those sorts of things. And so that makes our life so much easier. But pretend that you were getting in the car and you were in Los Angeles and you wanted to get to New York City, but you didn't have your phone with you and your car did not have GPS. So you literally had no idea how to get where you were going. What would you do? Well, you would probably drive around in circles trying to figure out how to get where you're going. Maybe you would get there. Hopefully, you would be smart enough to pull over and ask a lot of people, what's the fastest route to get there? But a lot of us would probably meander around and maybe we would go, ah, I don't need to get to New York. It's not that big of a deal. I'll just get to Texas. Texas is totally good enough. So my point is money is sort of the same way, is we need to create this GPS system for our money so that we know what direction we're going in. Because if we don't have that direction, that's how things kind of come undone and, and how we can look at our bank account or look at our budget one day and think, this is not at all representative of what I want to be doing with my money. So again, just a little food for thought. So now you've got that one thing in your head or that one step that you want to do. And when I was putting together this episode, there were like 14 weeks-ish to the holidays, give or take, which sounds like a lot. But again, I'm going to be talking to you and it's going to feel like tomorrow we're already be having our holiday podcast episodes. And I don't like to spend a lot at Christmas time if I don't have to. I love giving gifts. That is definitely part of my DNA. I love giving gifts, but I don't like spending a lot of money So what I do is I pull all our credit card points together for gifts. And then if I don't want to give someone a gift card, because that's typically what you can buy with your credit card points, I'll get the gift card and then I'll go out and buy them a gift with the gift card and give them the gift. See how that works? So they never even knew any part of this originated from a gift card, which is brilliant. And if you're thinking about purchasing maybe something big, let's say we're going to go out and you were going to buy your honey that that new big screen TV. Let's pretend it's $1,200. That's about $85 a week that you would need to save to pay for cash. The point is back into those big purchases, back into them now because you have those 14 weeks until the holidays. So you have some time, even if you're going to go on a, a trip or something like that around the holidays back into that so you can figure out how much money you need to save and then you can incorporate that in your budget so you don't wake up, you know, December 1st and it's rolling around the time that you need to buy whatever or go on the trip and you just don't even have that that money together. And another tip that I do, if I'm going to have to charge stuff uh, and it's going to incur some sort of debt is to come up with a plan of no more than three months to pay it off. That's kind of my marker. If 
if I can't pay off whatever I have to put on a credit card in three months, I'm not going to buy it. And if I do have to put it on a credit card, I'm looking for the lowest possible interest rate, humanly possible. Can I get a 0%? Can I get a, I don't have to pay, you know, any interest for 90 days? What is it that I can come up with so that when I'm paying this off in those three months, I know that it's going to get paid off in the right way and that it will actually be finished in those three months. So hopefully all those tips about holiday spending make sense to you. It's just thinking about it a little strategically now that you have the time to back into it so that you don't find yourself in that crazy holiday crunch with the stress and anxiety. And then January, you're looking at your credit card bill and you're absolutely freaking out because I've done that a time or two. I I don't suggest it. I think what I love about the fall the most is hot cocoa, sitting around by a fire, big comfy sweaters, rainy days, except if you live in Los Angeles. Here it's about heat and more heat and crazy heat. We can sometimes have Christmas day that's like 90 degrees, which I just think is, it's just out of question. It absolutely cannot be done. This year we're actually traveling on Christmas. We're going to do a full legitimate vacation over the holidays and I cannot wait. We're going to go away for two weeks. I don't believe it because I have not been able to take that long of a vacation in like five plus years. Oh, it's longer than that. We're going on probably seven years. So it is going to be amazing. We're going to go to Europe. I'm going to be in all of those comfy sweaters and rain and you name it. To me, to an LA girl, having the holidays feel Christmassy, whatever that means to you. That is definitely something that I am so looking forward to. But I think fall is also about a good time to put together a little financial plan for yourself. And it's not that hard to do. And you can do a lot of the legwork yourself, particularly if you decide you want to hire a financial planner. You can do a lot of this yourself. And then you can have a financial planner look over what you've put together and maybe give you some suggestions, some things that you're missing out. But in the meantime, why not take care of a lot of this stuff yourself? So here's the steps that I would do if I was sitting down with you and we were saying, okay, we're going to do a DIY fall financial plan. So first I would start with the list of your goals. For the next three to six months, I would have two different goal sheets. So three to six months and then six months to a year on whatever that time period is for you. You can also create your own time period. It doesn't have to be mine, whatever works for you. You can go longer than that, but I find that past a year, our brains, (laughs) they tend to shut off. Like it just gets too big to think about, well, in three years, I want to do this. That's just... It's a really long time from now, and I think it's really hard for you to stay motivated towards that. Now, you can have steps in your goal list that are going to get you towards whatever that big goal is in three years, like if you're going to buy a house or something like that, but I think if you keep it a little bit more narrow, it helps you stay focused. So you've got your goals, and I want you to define each goal. I want you to figure out, okay, when do you want to achieve this goal? How much is this goal going to cost you? And then what do you need to achieve it? So you're creating yourself a little action plan, a little roadmap, a little GPS system here for your goals so that you have some idea of what does this actually look like when I pencil this goal out? What am I actually committing myself to? And is it okay or is it not okay Maybe a goal falls off the list, maybe you move one up, but it's really the visualization of your goals that helps you create that plan and it helps you stay super laser focused. Now, if you haven't done this, I want you to do this. I want you to create a list of all of your fixed expenses each month. That is the stuff that you absolutely have to pay. So we're thinking rent, we're thinking mortgage, we're thinking student loans, we're thinking car payment, we're thinking groceries because you got to buy food, we're thinking any minimum credit card payments that you have to pay just the minimum amount because that's what you absolutely have to pay. 
So any of the stuff that you absolutely have to pay, write it out on a list. And you may say, Shauna, I know what these are. I totally got these in the back of my head. Trust me, write them out on a sheet of paper. There is, again, a method to this madness. You need to visually see this stuff. So write those all out. If you don't know what those are, go look at your recent bank statement or look at the app you use, something like that, just so that you can have a composite of what all those expenses are for one month for you. Just trust me on this. Then here's the part where it gets slightly more complicated, but this is the part where the magic really lies. I want you to take out a spare piece of paper and a colored highlighter, preferably two different colors of highlighter if you can find that. I want you to write down your variable expenses. This is the stuff that you don't have to pay, but you like to do. So eating out, shopping, working out, coffee runs, entertainment, extra credit card payments or extra student loan payments, any of those extra amounts that you pay every month. Again, look back at your bank statement if you don't know what these are. Go for one month and just write all of these out. It's really important, this writing down process. Then what I want you to do is take one of those color highlighters and I want you to highlight anything that does not make you feel good inside. Go down the list, whatever it is for you. Did you have to pay a stupid parking fee? Did you have to pay a fee to go to a yoga class and you hated the teacher and it was a gross experience and you're never going to go back to that yoga studio? Did you have to pay, I I don't know, baggage fees when you were traveling? What is it for you in that month period that you had to pay that it just doesn't make you feel happy? You don't like when you look at that expense. Highlight those with one highlighter. Then I want you to go back through the list and I want you to highlight all the stuff that you really like with another highlighter. Maybe you're like, I love going out for burgers every Friday night. Uh, Maybe you go to concerts. Whatever it is for you, highlight those things that you actually did like. And I want you to just sit back then once you're done highlighting and take a look at it. What sticks out to you? If you got rid of some of the stuff you didn't like, what could you do with that money? And a hint here is to go back and look at your goal list. If you had this extra money every month, what goal could you put it towards and how much faster would that get you towards that goal? That really is so simple, but that is the magic that happens with your money when you go through this process. So you've got your goals written out. You've got your fixed expenses written out. You've got your list of variable expenses that you're happy with, the ones that you're not happy with. Now you've got a basic plan in place. So once you get there, I want you to ask yourself some questions. Which goal am I attacking first? What one am I super, super excited about? How can I use my money wisely to achieve that goal? What are three things you need to do to achieve that goal now that you've looked at kind of the whole picture of what's going on with your finances. And then lastly, I want you to think about what area of your finances are at risk. So is it your insurance plans, your car insurance, your home insurance, your renter's insurance, your health insurance, any of those things where you're just not feeling super comfy about what you've got in place? What about your retirement savings? Are you not maximizing your match? Are you not saving anything? Think about your emergency fund. Where are you at? How many months do you have saved? Think about debt. Think about all of these areas of your finances that are at risk. And can you, with this excess money that you have found now in your bank account, can you put it towards one of those things? Maybe there's some area where you feel super exposed, you feel super at risk. It's also important to take care of those things, not just to go for like all the awesome goals that you want to achieve because they're not always things that are going to keep you protected. So I kind of want that like teeter-totter effect where you're going for those amazing goals like buying a house, maybe you want to start a family, maybe you want to go on an awesome vacation, but then also can we take care of some of the financial areas where you're a little bit at risk at the same time? That would make me super happy. So I can continue to preach about budgeting, 
creating a plan for yourself, it isn't hard. It isn't hard. Listen to my words. I'm telling you this completely from personal experience. You just have to get in the right headspace to do it. That's all it is. And if it doesn't click this year, maybe it's going to click next year. And that's totally okay. It's totally okay. The money thing, it's up to you. What you do with what you've got. This is your decision. And, you know, I think we all fantasize about winning the lottery or getting this huge raise at work or landing a new contract or a new client. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I don't want that to get in the way of you being active with what you've got right now and you being really smart with the cash that you've got in your bank account so that you can roll out of fall, roll into winter, roll into the new year and be sitting super pretty with your finances. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode of Millennial Money. I'll be back on Tuesday with a fresh episode for you to check out. In the meantime, if you love this podcast, love this episode, and have found value in the content we share with you, I totally appreciate it if you do me a favor, head on over to iTunes, rate and review the podcast. I promise to be your BFF for life. 